Hello and welcome to this session. Yes, as clear from the background, here we are to discuss the paper that had been conducted on 11th day of January 2019 and I have the paper that was conducted in the morning shift. All of us know, starting 2019, this is a historic event because JEE Main has conducted all the question papers in online format. Till last year, the paper was conducted partly in an offline mode and partly in online. But as I said, starting 2019, JEE Main has made a complete transition into online mode. So well, on different dates, the paper was conducted. And yes, we are here to discuss the questions of physics that had been asked on 11th January 2019 morning shift. Let's see, the first question that I have is quite an interesting one which carries the DNA of JE main because this question is not there in JE advance and it has been derived from the topic principle of communication. Though a straightforward but yet a distinctive feature because the syllabus is there only for JE main. So here it says, say, an amplitude modulated signal AM is given by this. Quite obviously, from this expression, I can easily recognize this is the carrier frequency while this is the modulating frequency. The higher one is the carrier one. That's a nice way to understand. And T is in seconds. The sideband frequency, I require the upper sideband and the lower sideband. That's what is required, and we need to calculate this. But remember one thing. This is given in omega while the answer is required in kilohertz. So you got to be careful in terms of calculation. All right, let's see. This goes in a very, very straightforward manner. And it's something like this, say. If I see the situation here, this one is the modulating omega, and that is equal to 2.2 into 10 raised to the power 4. The unit is going to be radian per second, that's a very straightforward pattern. And then this is the carrier one, so I get omega c. That is equal to 5.5 into 10 raised to the power 5, of course, radian per second. Now, we know that goes in a very straightforward formula that the sideband frequencies, the upper sideband and the lower sideband. So here goes omega upper sideband, if I want to calculate, the upper sideband frequency is going to be omega c plus omega m. And likewise, if I want to calculate the lower sideband, that omega l is going to be omega c minus omega m. And once you get the value in terms of omega, don't forget to convert in terms of frequency, which is simple, omega divided by 2 pi. So upon doing that, the upper and the lower sideband and subsequently divided by 2 pi, the correct answer is going to be option number 3. So question number 1 has correct option as option number 3. All right, now let's move to the second question. Question number 2. That has been derived from the topic of RL charging and discharging circuit of course, from electromagnetism. And in this particular figure, as I proceed, you would see the question has been raised involving both the situation, the charging as well as discharging. So what is the question? Let's try to see. Here is an RL circuit, and you could see that there is S2, and there is another switch, which is S1. And the question says the switch S1 is closed at time t equals to 0. So that means initially, S1 is closed while S2 is open. So quite obviously, initially the circuit is a RL charging circuit. So current would build up exponentially with respect to time, right? After that, at some later time T0, the switch S1 is open and S2 is closed. That means after time T0, S1 is open and S2 is closed. That means now moment this switch is open and this is closed, the battery would be dysfunctional and the circuit simply reduces to a RL discharging circuit. In other words, 
Before time t0, the circuit was a charging circuit, and after time t0, the circuit is a discharging circuit. So that's very, very clear. And what I need to find is that the behavior of the current i as a function of time, that's what we need to calculate. So let's see, here are the four options out of which we need to choose a correct one. And if you see, initially, the current builds up exponentially with respect to time. So this, this would be eliminated. And out of these two, a simple RL charging circuit will have a build of this nature. But after time t0, you know, the current has to decay exponentially with respect to time. And here, unfortunately, none of the option has been given with an exponential decay. So, if I were to choose the best option among four, I would give my vote to option number three, that initially it resembles to an RL charging circuit, the exponential one, and after that, it had to decay exponentially, but fair enough, out of these things, the best option I would vote would be for option number three. So that was question number two. Now, let's move to question number three. Question number three, a straightforward question, and it has been set from the topic of units and measurement. You know, during the classes, we always say it with conviction that chapter number one, units and measurement is quite important, and questions being set has a very high probability from this topic. In fact, by giving this question, JE has strengthened our conviction. So let's see, what is the question like? It says the force of interaction between two atoms is given by this much. F equals to alpha beta exponent minus x squared by alpha kT. And this k is the Boltzmann's constant. Capital T is the temperature. X, of course, is the distance. Alpha, beta are two constants and whose dimension is unknown. And from this given question, we need to calculate the dimension of beta. A very straightforward yet a small tricky point is there which is associated with this part that instead of going and hunting the dimension of Boltzmann's constant, you move a bit trickily, k times t has the dimension of energy. You can refer to the simple expression kinetic energy per molecule 3 by 2 kT, isn't it? So as I said that instead of going and hunting the dimension of k, the dimension of t which is the temperature, you better go with a combined one and yes now we already know that kT is going to have the dimension of energy. So apart from that another important thing is the thing that is here which is the power of the exponent we know that's dimensionless. In other words, the dimension of x square and this has to be same. So the first thing that I'll get is dimension of x square is L square. That's going to be alpha m L square t minus of 2. So what we did is that the dimension of this equals to dimension of this. From here, you can calculate the value of alpha. Once you know the value of alpha, now you can invoke another principle and the next principle is, you know, that overly this given thing is dimensionless. So which indicates the dimension of force and the dimension of alpha times beta is same. So the second equation that I'm going to generate, mLT minus 2 is the dimension of force, right? And that dimension of force would be the dimension of alpha multiplied by beta. I hope these two equations are sufficient enough in order to get the dimension of beta and that gives us option number two. So option number two would be the correct option for question number three. Time to proceed to question number four now. 